You have to live and breathe code. How many hours should you code per day? Is it 12 hours, two hours, six hours? And how much of that time is actually spent coding? Let's talk about it. When we think about what programmers do all day, we think of coding, but the code they write is a direct result of thinking, designing, understanding the project requirements, debugging, deploying, maintaining, documenting, testing, and refactoring code. For me, writing new code accounts for about 20% of the code I write. The rest of the time is spent on other topics related to code. Again, thinking about code, analyzing code, researching, and most importantly, refactoring code. Now, these are a few quotes that I think really fit for this topic. If I had an hour to solve a problem, I'd spend 55 minutes thinking about the problem and five minutes thinking about solutions. Albert Einstein. Prolific developers don't always write a lot of code. Instead, they solve a lot of problems. The two themes are not the same. Jay Chambers. And now the next one is actually not from a programmer or a developer or a mathematician, but still it applies. It's actually from someone who wrote a lot. My working habits are simple. Long periods of thinking, short periods of writing. Ernest Hemingway. Now think about those quotes for a moment. What do they all have in common? A lot of time is devoted to solving problems, to thinking about the problems, organizing your thoughts. And if you want to be successful as a programmer, yeah, you have to spend a lot of time writing code. You have to spend a lot of time practicing different tutorials. But you also have to think about the actual problem you're trying to solve. Now, here's a few points to consider. Quantity versus quality of code. Simply put, you can write thousands of lines of code that's buggy, or you could write 100 lines of clean code that's easy to read, easy to maintain, and is bug free. That being said, you have to remember, it's like writing anything. You're gonna have a first draft, so whenever you're creating your application, your program, or your piece of software, you're gonna have a first draft of your code. This is obviously done in your development environment. Did you read my shirt? Don't follow this advice over here. You don't want to have your first draft on your production server. While developing your first draft of your code, you might sit there and just type away. You should definitely have a framework or you should definitely have a thought process and a flow for how you think your code should run. You will probably write this out in pseudocode first. But before you push your code to production, make sure you refactor it, optimize it, make it efficient, make sure it's secure. And you gotta remember that programming is a marathon, it's not a sprint. Programming a good application or a piece of software requires you to have a thoughtful and meaningful process. Now, there will be times where you just get inspired and you're gonna sit there at your desk, at your computer, and you're gonna type out some of the best code you've ever written. But most often, it's gonna be a long process of thinking about your code. And what is the problem it's trying to solve? What is your program trying to do? And now, if you're just starting off with code, if you're just becoming a new programmer, you might be thinking about how long will it take for you to master programming. And I've spoken about this several times on this channel, and you might have heard about the 10,000 hour rule. The gist of it is, is that in most topics, it takes about 10,000 hours for a person to master that particular craft. Now, here's a breakdown of what that 10,000 hours actually means to you. If you spend 10 hours a day studying, that equals about 3,650 hours per year. That means it'll take about two and a half years for you to master coding. But can you really spend 10 hours every single day focused on learning how to code? That's not an easy task especially if you have responsibilities and other things that eat away at your time. So what about five hours a day? What does that translate to? Five hours a day is 1,825 hours within a year. That means it'll take you about five and a half years to master programming. But wait a minute, what if you don't have five hours a day? What if you just have one hour a day to code and to really learn how to code? Now you might wanna sit down for this one because if you just spend one hour per day, that's 365 hours per year. At that rate, to become a master programmer will take you more than 27 years. Now, the good news is that you don't have to wait to be a master programmer to start putting out your projects. You obviously have to know the fundamentals. You have to know the syntax of the language you're working with. You have to understand the code logic, how to put together a good application and a good program. That will take less time. Now, everybody's different, and in reality, everybody learns at a different pace. 
Some people have that beautiful mind that they could just process information a whole lot faster. So here's a couple of quick tips on how to learn to code faster. Be consistent. Make coding a habit. Learn from the right resources. You don't want to waste your time on poorly written tutorials. Try out different coding projects. The one thing about code is that if you give five different developers the same project, how to create a calculator, let's say in JavaScript, you'll get five different approaches on how to design that calculator. So by going over different coding projects, you'll learn to see different styles and solutions to the same problem. Solve real life problems. Practice on some simple applications and projects like a to-do list. Maybe practice creating a calculator. The benefit of doing this is that you're gonna train yourself in how to think like a programmer, the thought process that goes into creating an application. Now the next tip is actually two in one. Some people say you have to work really hard. Others say you have to work really smart. I say you have to work hard and smart. And that goes into my next tip. Try the Pomodoro technique. If you go back to the 10,000 hour rule, how can you focus for 10 hours a day or five hours a day? Do you try to do it all in one session? I don't think so. I mean, seriously, you have to eat. You have to use the bathroom. You have to walk around because sitting at a desk all day, it's not good for your health and your brain needs time to process the information that you're taking in. So try to focus for 25 minutes straight on just studying or coding. Then get up and take a five minute break. Then after four rounds of this, take about a half hour. By doing this, you're gonna give your brain a chance to process all that new information. And you could try breaking it up into coding sessions. Code in the morning for maybe an hour or two, code in the afternoon for another hour or so, and maybe spend some time in the evening coding as well. Now, wait a minute, you might be thinking to yourself, that's a lot of structure and coding and programming and thinking about how a program should flow. It's a very structured process, but creativity is not really structured. Creativity and inspiration can sometimes be very spontaneous. So having a schedule is important, but you don't want to be so rigid that you stop being creative. And that segues into the next point. It's hard to be creative when you're burnt out. So at all costs, you have to try to avoid burning out when you're learning how to code. Burning out is a real issue within the programming landscape. That's why it's important to make sure you take breaks, not only throughout the day, but maybe take a day off every week. Make sure to try to take vacation time. Try to get some exercise in also. It's very good for the brain to get some physical activity in. And they say that we are what we eat. Now for me, I love pizza, but every now and then you have to have something healthy. Also make sure to get enough sleep. Some nights I do better than others, but ultimately you want to make sure that your brain is refreshed. And I track my sleep patterns with my Whoop band. And it often tells me that I need to get more sleep than what I actually get. What's good is that it actually tells me how much time I spend in deep sleep, how much time I spend in REM sleep, and how much time I spend in light sleep. Now, if you don't know, REM sleep is very important for refreshing your brain. Deep sleep is for rejuvenating your body. And light sleep, well, we all can't just jump into REM sleep or deep sleep. So yeah, there's light sleep in there. And then another tip to avoid burnout is to socialize. Now, the question was, how much time per day should you spend coding? And the answer is kind of different for a solo programmer working from home versus a programmer who works for an agency or a large corporation. If you're working alone or if you're working from home, you're pretty much having to do it all on your own. And when you're working from home, you have to deal with all the distractions that eat away at your time. And let's face it, when you're working from home, when do you clock out? When do you stop programming or coding for the day? Now, if you work for an agency or corporation, you do spend a lot of time traveling, getting to and from your job. Then you're gonna probably have your morning meeting, followed by a couple of other meetings scattered throughout your day. Then you're probably gonna start chatting with some of your other coworkers. And unlike the work from home developer, you're probably gonna have a regular schedule, a nine to five. Oh, and then somewhere in there, you're gonna actually spend some time coding. Now, how many hours a day do I spend coding? When I first started off learning how to code, there were some days that I spent probably about 12 hours or maybe 13 hours really trying to figure out what I was doing. There was a lot of information coming in, and I would love to say that I have the fastest processor, but that's not the case. So it took me some time, and it took me time to learn the best studying habits. So then I started breaking it down, chunking it throughout the day, scattering my study periods. Now, once I actually knew what I was doing, then I probably started to scale it back down to maybe eight hours a day of coding. And even that's a lot. That's a lot of time coding. Now I spend probably about five hours a day coding, some days more, some days less. And remember, not all that time is spent on writing new code. 
I spend my time reading, researching, analyzing, refactoring code. I like to eat, exercising, playing chess, and outside of that five hours, spending time with my family. And then of course I spend time on social media, checking emails, working on projects, and creating these videos. Now if you do a Google search, you're gonna find that some people say they work 12 hours a day, every single day, without a break. Some people say that you have to live and breathe code. Others say that you really only need about two to four hours a day. And everybody is different. Everybody's life situation is different. Everybody's job requirement is different. So to answer the question of how many hours you should code per day, just remember, focus on long periods of thinking with shorter periods of writing code. Don't forget, test your code in your development environment, not your production environment. All right, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification icon. If you have any thoughts, comments, or opinions, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching and happy coding. All right, see you in the next one.